Hey you guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be doing something different. I know, what was it, last month we asked you guys to submit your questions and today... We're gonna answer all of them. Yeah. And if you're new here, we are Kristen and Michael. We have a short-term rental out in the Joshua Tree area and we have been running it ourselves for the last two plus years. Yeah, and we've been sharing our experience, telling you what it's like, what sucks, what's great, <laughs> uh, income, outcome diys all of the things yeah. that we have been covering on our channel so welcome if you are new let's get into it we love costco towels we get the yeah. big ones at costco and there's like they come in like a big pack mm -hmm. those have been our tried and true just like the white ones cotton cotton that you brand. get they are very affordable and they are uh, do not feel cheap yeah which is nice. good they do not feel like super luxurious but that's been what we use yeah yeah they're like middle tier they're pretty mm -hmm. great and then mm -hmm. for sheets we have always loved cozy earth yeah and that's just like in our regular lives we love cozy earth and then just the sheets feel so good we have two bedrooms at our airbnb we have a king bed and a queen bed we use different sheets on both of them the king bed we use the more expensive sheets yeah the higher end sheets that we like to use because we imagine that when people are traveling and usually the either the parents or if it's just a couple staying, they're gonna hit that bed first and mm -hmm. they're the ones paying for it. We want them to feel the most luxe and like they they have a five star stay. Yeah. And then we also have, like Michael said, we have our queen bedroom, mm -hmm. which we keep our Brooklyn and sheets on, which are yeah. sateen sheets and they are just your average I don't wanna say average, because they're not average sheets. No. They're, they're also like a step great. up from yeah. something from home goods or whatever they're yeah. they're really nice and but when we really started well. we used amazon sheets to get us started and they worked fine they're not the most we they did feel starchy yeah they started to feel starchy after a while mm -hmm. they were like a cotton linen blend yeah. and these two sets of sheets have never felt that way they feel softer with every wash and we have them at our own home here so we're obsessed how, how often would you say we have to buy a new set of sheets probably twice a year twice a year yeah. it's been In a sunbeam. Yeah, yeah. Finn is part cat. Yeah, and he, he is. loves laying in any ounce of sun that he can get. Yeah, he gets energized. Um, <laughs> yes, there is something possibly that rivals that, and that is his heated blanket. Oh yeah. Every morning he has his little spot in the window in the front, and he curls up there. He puts himself back to bed, or he puts himself on his heated blanket. If we don't have it on yet, he's in his bed. But yeah, he's heated always blanket. in the front window. Yeah. I would say really bad I used to have really bad anxiety and I used to think people were going to trash our Airbnb. I used to think people were going to burn down the house. <laughs> we're going to like knock holes in the walls and just break glasses and do all that stuff. So we were bracing for impact. But we also did not set our house up for parties. Uh, we do not accept more than four guests right now. And so that has been avoided. People have been very respectful of our home and we have also put instructions on how to use like the fireplace and everything. So we haven't even had one issue with that. Yeah, we've over explained mm -hmm. everything, maybe to a fault, but we rarely get questions. Yeah. So I think that's a win. It's gonna be different for every host. Yeah. We are in the high desert and we had no idea. We're on five acres too. It's a lot of land. What the wind yeah. would be like up there. And this year in particular, we've had a really windy, crazy weather year yeah. up there. Like From heavy rains to heavy winds. And it's been like no other year. We have yeah. an old man that lives down the street that is so kind and he's lived here for over 20 years. Yeah. And he told us that this year was the worst year he's ever seen for wind. If you've been watching our channel, you saw it ripped the hot tub cover right off. It pulled the straps out. So we put now a hurricane straps on yeah, it. Yeah. Um, we've had like tables and chairs flipped over. Um, luckily the house has been fine. Yeah, the house is definitely great. But I think outside, I didn't think we were gonna have to deal with outside stuff as much. Yeah. Like, like I was like, okay, Airbnb inside, you know, like people are gonna be inside, but it's dealing with like wood furniture getting bleached by the sun, 
um, animals, <laughs> plants, dying, weeds. like weeds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just things you... Nature. I guess you think about. I think nature. Nature. <laughs> <laughs> was something that we did not anticipate dealing with as much as we do now. Yeah. Yes, we had a very serious conversation when we were thinking about moving out again mm. from La Quinta, where we were staying with Michael's parents, mm. about whether we should either buy a new place up there or actually long-term rent, because mm. there were a lot of short-term rentals like coming up on the market for long-term. Yeah. And it just didn't make sense for us with our work and our family Families. health issues really started up mm -hmm. and we were like, okay, clearly we're not supposed to be out there right now at least. Yeah. We do fantasize and romanticize having a farm on our five acres and um, like trust really- Trust me, every day I still get email <laughs> updates and I check the properties that are new listed probably like five times a week. Yeah. So it's still in the back of my mind and I guess that leads us to the next question is would we ever buy another one? Um, are you planning to buy another Airbnb? What kind of property would it be? Have you thought about investing in a tiny house? Um, we have thought about buying another Airbnb and like I just said, we do check Zillow like every day. The problem is right now, interest rates are high and that's causing the price of homes, the mortgages to be high, higher than I think the projected income could be yeah. because the market, at least in Southern California, is super saturated pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Tiny homes are super hard to permit in Southern California. So that's kind of out. Unless um, like we lived there and had something yeah. on our property, that'd be different. That's the way you can permit out there, mm -hmm. something like that. But the, the problem I think in, when I think of tiny properties, it's like, what's the resale value too? Like, is it gonna grow in equity like a normal house? Like, is it worth the investment? I know they, I know that they book really well, but like, let's say people stop booking, like, what do you have? Yeah. You have like a small it. house that's not worth as much as like a normal, residence yeah so um, no untidy home and eventually we, we do we just it has to one it has to be right i think we would want to try doing in the joshua tree area mm -hmm. like proper well i mean just staying in that area so when we go and check on our airbnbs we can go and check on all of them and we have teams set up that market still seems to be good if you have a very interesting property but we are seeing a ton ton of homes on the market and for rent we also, this is today, this is current day. So yeah. we're, you're up to date with us right now in this Q&A. It is currently June mm -hmm. and it is looking to be one of the slowest summers we have seen in the last two, two years. Two, I mean, two years and talking to other people, like it feels very slow. Mm -hmm. So we will keep you guys updated on our bookings and stuff like that, but. Because we had a wonderful spring. Yeah. Our spring was, phenomenal yeah and we are so grateful for that yeah that rides us through these months that mm -hmm. are a lot slower but we were not anticipating how slow yeah so far it's looking very quiet <laughs> so we'll, we'll catch you guys up on that when we get to it in the timeline of our vlogs yeah um but yeah so it's it's we've thought about it but it's perfect. We're thinking about it yeah summer though is perfect for us to be out there and working on projects so yeah. it's not we like to use the summer Too months to, to work on things, which we are going to be working on a new project coming up, so stay tuned. Your cleaners are your eyes, boots on the ground kind of thing, and yeah. if you're not communicating with your cleaners or your cleaners aren't communicating with you, either one, it was a really clean guest, or two, they're just trying to get in, get out, and they're not actually paying attention. Mm -hmm. So we like to over-communicate with our cleaners over like if they see anything that's off. Yeah, like they'll send us photos and today, for example, I got a photo of our living room and I zoomed in and I saw that there was still a record on the record player. So things like that, that if that were to stay for a couple days with no one there, that record would be warped and ruined. Because it's close to a window and the heat, it's really hot there right now. Yeah, yeah. so that is part of that extra communication. It's not even extra communication, it's just we self-manage 
and they're sending us photos of what the house looks like post clean. Yeah, and if so we know how to rate our guests. And if something's out yeah. of place, we're able to be like, oh wait, you missed that. Yeah. Please put that there or refill this. Yeah, I, I mean, and maybe if you have a smaller apartment or something like that, you don't need to communicate as much. Or if you trust your cleaner, like their family or something like that, that cares yeah. for the property like you do. But we're so far away that we like to over communicate. Yeah, and yeah. no one's gonna clean your house like you would clean your house. Yeah, but. We, yep. we trust our cleaner. Um, sometimes four eyes are better than two. I would say the first one is keep your ego out of responding to messages. The guess is not always right, but make sure when you respond, you respond in a professional business manner. Mm -hmm. um, do not let your ego get involved because that can lead to not good reviews. Yeah, it's just not worth it. It's yeah. like, if you need to type something out, type it in your notes section, and then breathe and write what you need to write to your guest. Uh, that is something that we do really well. Like I'll kind of get upset about something or my emotions are in mm -hmm. the way and Michael's like, hang on, let me see what you wrote. He'll rewrite it and make it even better. But it's just, we've not had an issue in that regard because we've been so, and we've said it so many times on our channel, Keeping yeah. our ego out of the situation has helped immensely. Yeah. And then number two, I would say reinvest in your property. Make sure that you are keeping up to date on like furniture and micro design trends and like make sure that obviously if you're generating some form of income from it, update it every once in a while so mm -hmm. that things don't like furniture. If furniture breaks, fix it. Yeah. If towels are old, replace them. Keep your business competitive by reinvesting in it. Yeah, and make sure you are up to date on all your software, make sure that yeah. nothing's not linked, or if you update the home, make sure your listing is updated, yeah. always be on the back end checking all of that, analytics, yeah. doing anything you can on the software side of things to make sure that your listing is up to date. notch and up to date. Yeah. And the last thing I would say, you know, maybe once or twice a year, pretend like you're a guest going to the area, pull up your property, put it side by side to another property, or like other properties in the area that maybe it's like an incognito browser. So you don't have like that attachment to your email going through Airbnb and see how your listing compares. See if you can be competitive, see if your listing still holds up, check your pricing often, make sure you're still strategizing pricing right. Um, but don't forget to look at the competition. No, okay, so at the bottom of our closet we mm -hmm. have- In the hall closet. Yeah, in the hall closet. How we deal with linens is we have a checkout list that we send both in our Airbnb or short-term rental message board. And then we also have a one sheet mm -hmm. and it tells everybody all the checkout instructions. A physical, a physical one sheet. Yeah, physical one sheet at the, at the house. house. Yeah. And it just tells them where to put the linens and um, any towels or whatever they used in a little basket that we have at the very bottom of our hall closet. It's just yeah. a big basket and it has a liner in it. And they just throw everything in there so our cleaner can come grab it and bring it in the garage and, and do our thing. That's towels, right? Towels and, oh yeah, not sheets. We not don't have sheets. people. During COVID times, we had people strip their own beds. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. It's just the towels. Yes, because we like our cleaner to take the sheets off and be able to see if there's anything. If they're all bundled up in a pile, she doesn't look at them and, and they just was, go in mm -hmm. and they get stained. She was missing stains back, yeah. back when that was happening. So that's our process on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we did not do a projection of a return on the investment. But if you've been watching our channel, you know that this year, the high season in the desert is spring and fall. Fall is kind of winter works too, but we had the best spring we've ever, we've had. ever had. And this was the first spring we had both a hot tub and we built the moon garden in the fall of last year. And this, we, we blew our numbers out of the water. If we're talking ROI, we definitely got a return on our investment during the high season. Mm -hmm. Now that it's the low season, uh, we'll see. We'll get into those numbers. We're just getting into the summer, but um, I mean, so far we've definitely seen a return on our investments. 
have we looked at not allowing one night bookings because you're dealing with more turnovers, you're dealing with potentially lower star ratings from like multiple people staying at your property? So during the week we have a two night minimum mm -hmm. and then on the weekends because we can make more per night, mm -hmm. we have one night stays. It's worth dealing with the headache and the market of our area people come out for one night. Yeah, like they're coming out from LA, they're coming out from Orange County or San wherever. San Diego, like, yeah. They just want a quick overnight stay. They wanna mm -hmm. get out to the national park, whatever, just for and a some, day. Some people will do Joshua Tree one night and Palm Springs another night. And so I feel like we'd be missing out on bookings if we had a like two night minimum or mm -hmm. something like that. But during the week we do that just so that it makes more sense. It's worth it for us because the prices do dip down during mm -hmm. the week. So that's why we do that. There's definitely, you're accurate. It is more wear and tear on the house. It's more cleaning fees. It's more all of that stuff. But at least in our market, it's worth it. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's it. I think that's all the questions. That's it for our Q&A this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Next week, we will be getting into staying at Airbnbs yes. overseas. Yeah, Did that rhyme? we have a series going on our channel from host to guest, we're calling it. Yes. Um, where we go from hosting on Airbnb to being guests. And we're going to take you on that journey. It's going to be a lot of fun. You'll see some insights to what people do over in Europe. If you have more questions, questions we didn't get to, anything else you want to know, drop us a comment down below and we can save it for a future episode or we can just talk about it in a future vlog or something like that. But coming up on the channel, we do have our European travels and then we have, we'll keep you guys updated on our summer numbers because like we said, it's not looking so good so far. What else? Oh, we and got another project we have coming. a big project coming up that we are going to be doing at the house that will hopefully bring in more bookings so that we can stay competitive during these downtimes, right? Yeah, and then through the new year. Yeah. We'll just double our numbers from this year now. Ooh, if we can, That'd be insane. We'll see. All right. All right. We'll see. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye.